Dynasty. Who else in here has a YouTube channel? Raise your hand. Let's get a round of applause for all that. Wow. If I recall correctly, the man in the Newton Geisler cosplay for Pacific Rim is astounding beyond belief, who is one of the uh, admins or moderators of Wikizilla, correct? Thank you very much for your hard work. I'm not quite sure uh, uh, who else is in here, so uh, if, uh, anyway, if you are a content creator on YouTube, shout out to you. So. Yeah! Woo! Oh. You're, you. You're breathtaking! <laughs> You're all breathtaking! I love you. I love you too, man. Shout out to my, uh, shout out to my best customer right there, 16th birthday coming up. I'm not your best customer. <laughs> and, uh, um, Hey! Yeah. Yeah. Put this whole thing together. Yeah. We're all nerds here. Yeah. 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 Let's get another round of applause for Chris, <laughs> aka GojiFan93, for starting yeah. this goddamn years ago. Yeah. Thank you. I'm gonna interview again for college. That was like, what, four years ago now? It's good, it's good to hear you from, to hear from you again. Okay. Uh, yeah, probably. Okay, it's, uh, it's 305, that 305. Uh, now, let us begin. How has everyone's weekend been? Okay, so uh, we'll start off by introducing ourselves. Uh, my name is Davis Medola. You may know me as the YouTuber Titan Goji. Yeah! Yeah! I am uh, Nathan Grady. You might know me as the Sorry to the Nari guy. Yeah! Contributor yeah! on Monstrosity, so we we'll sound to be all. Hello, everybody! Welcome to the YouTubers panel. Heidi Ho! <laughs> Yeah. I am Matt Burkett of Monstrosity's Tokusatsu Vlog, and yeah. I'm just a big fat jerk. Yeah. What's up, everybody? D-Man back. Welcome to the Godzilla YouTuber Special. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, people of G-Fest. This is Andres Perez, a.k.a. Kaiju Noir, here with the YouTubers panel at G-Fest 26. Yeah. What's up, President? I'm Jacob, and that's... My name's Alistair, and I'm just here to... I'm just happy to be here for my first G-Fest. Uh, it's been absolutely amazing. And together we made Dangerville. Okay, so uh, I feel like the best place to start is the beginning, where our origins lie. So uh, how were you all first exposed to Godzilla films or anything Tokusatsu related. Um, uh, my my first exposure to Godzilla was when uh, was when my dad took me and my two older brothers to the mall one day. We got Godzilla uh, Save the Earth for the PlayStation Two, and uh, and after that he told us about the movie series, and then we got that uh, classic media box set uh, that uh, that had the original Godzilla, the the US version with Mothra vs Godzilla. Rodan, Terra of Mechagodzilla, Godzilla's Revenge. The first one I watched was Terra of Mechagodzilla, and uh, I owe so much to that film. And uh, and, uh, I, and I, I, just, I just really appreciate it. So, uh, yeah. Awesome. Uh, like many of you, I was, and, and also Davis, I was introduced to uh, Tokusatsu in general through my parents. Uh, you know, they're the ones who showed me like Power Rangers first, actually. And uh, after that, like my mom and my dad thought, oh, well, I bet he'd like, you know, those old Godzilla movies. So we went to a blockbuster, rented Godzilla versus Mecha Godzilla, good one to start with. Never seen anything like that before, it blew my mind. The moment when, like, you realize that that's not the real Godzilla, or like when you change into a cyber gun, like, holy crap, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. There's a bit of a tragic part to that because. Not long after that, my parents got divorced, and 
that is one of the clearest memories in my mind of our entire family together watching this you know kooky movie me looking behind them for like affirmation like did that just happen so i suppose like godzilla tokusatsu in general i, I associate with the innocence and purity of a family i think that many of you in the audience can relate My first stuffed animal out of the womb was a Godzilla. My first Godzilla movie was Godzilla 1985, and it's just been there ever since. <laughs> so, um, I love all Tokusatsu, you know, then, you know, it was Ultraman, Power Rangers, VR Troopers, Kamen Rider, all that stuff. And, uh, yeah, it's just been a lifelong uh, obsession, and it's been a lot of fun. I, uh, I don't really have a discovery point because I was too young to remember. Ever, ever since I was born, my dad's been showing me Godzilla movies, so I've grown up with it as a part of my life my entire life. There has never been a point where I've been alive when Godzilla hasn't been huge in my world, so it's, it's always been there. He may or may not be the real Godzilla. <laughs> Uh, let's see, growing up, I was a huge fan of dinosaurs, like you know, any other kid, and my parents one day got me a set of VHS tapes, one being Godzilla vs. the Sea Monster, the other being Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla. I saw those two VHS tapes like hundreds of times, and I was never the same again. I ended up collecting, adding more and more VHSs, and eventually DVDs, while at the same time I grew up with the likes of Power Rangers and Ultraman Tiga, and uh, a little bit of Kamen Rider, like Savant's Masked Rider and uh, Dragon Knight. And uh, yeah, after I became more uh, acclimated to the internet, you know, it just opened the doors to a whole world of tokusatsu media. And I was, again, I was never the same again. And I, you know, never regret diving into this deep ocean of entertainment since then. Yeah, so just like these guys, if it wasn't for my parents and for my love of dinosaurs, as I was, you know, coming up, growing of age and all that, you know, maybe I wouldn't have found Godzilla, but luckily I found this big, beautiful guy, and from there on out, I just feel like I've been playing catch-up, trying to, you know, I mean, it's 65 years worth of awesomeness, so that's pretty much, that's pretty much just where it goes with me. Awesome. So, I mean, when I was first introduced, I mean, when I was younger, like all these other lot now, um, I always loved dinosaurs and Ray Harryhausen's uh, films like Clash of the Titans and Jason and the Argonauts. I always loved them. Um, and once I ran, went around to my uh, uncle's house and to distract me, he knew I liked this stuff. So to distract me, he was like, here's a bunch of Godzilla VHSs, just watch them. And I was like, oh, all right. I'm like, jeez, that's wonderful. I absolutely, I fell in love with them almost instantly. Um, and when we went back to my house, um, I got my, they got a call from my uncle. My parents got a call from my uncle. They were like, where are all our Godzilla VHSs? <laughs> I stuck them in my bag and um, they, didn't, they, didn't, they literally didn't mind. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much how I fell in love with the franchise. Uh, Alright, so, uh, so uh, uh, starting here on out until a very special presentation from uh, the Danger Bowl guys we'll get to later. Uh, th uh, this, uh, this will be more, like, more discussion based, so I'll, I'll uh, mention a question from this paper, and and, and uh, we, we can all just like jump in like in the conversation and whatnot. Um, what inspired you to become a Godzilla YouTuber? Um, I, 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 I'm sure I'm sure like part of it definitely has to do uh, with uh, with some previous uh, Godzilla YouTubers like uh, Chris Cyrus right there, and, uh, Goody seventy three, Deadzilla, uh, Ultraman Kronos, uh, and whatnot. <laughs> And, uh, and 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 uh, and I also I also feel like part of it has to do uh, uh, with the fact that uh, we we now live in live in an age where a lot of people uh, can like have their voices be heard. So uh, yeah, I, I, I also 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 feel like that that's what it, like really comes down to when it, when it like comes to inspiration. It's like oh uh, this this other person is talking about this thing that I really like. I can do the same thing. Uh, you guys want to add anything to that? Uh, let's see, I'm just curious, how many of you guys were ever inspired by the likes of James Rolfe, aka the Angry Video Game Nerd, and uh, Doug Walker, the Nostalgia Critic? Oh, yeah. I feel like those guys, like, really, like, set the stand for, like, a lot of people there. It's, like, for me personally, it kind of, like, 
made that like spark inside my head, thinking, oh wow, talking about movies and stuff on the internet sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, uh, anything you guys want to ask? Uh, I grew up listening to Steve Reif and Ed Godachewski's commentaries and everything like that on the Godzilla DVDs, and I saw their special features, and so I was always interested in more of everything to do with Godzilla, not just the films themselves, but what went into making them and everything like that. So that had started me down a more in-depth path for Godzilla, and then it was actually my discovery of the smaller podcast called The Sons of Sarazawa, featuring this guy right here, that uh, back in 2014 made me go, I, I could probably transition from what I was doing then, which I had a channel since 2011 making gaming videos, into I, I could totally talk about Godzilla on the internet, and hopefully someday get to meet this guy. Now I'm up here on stage with him, so mission accomplished. You're welcome, internet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for us, we've always just, I mean, at least been creative people. Even before YouTube, I've just wanted to make things based on the stuff I love. Uh, and so the, the idea that YouTube just gives me a, a platform to just make it for people like me, of course it's just going to fuel creativity and it's going to make you want to make more. Um, so even before Godzilla, we, we used to make videos for a channel called Halo Follower, if anyone knows what that is. Um, and we did that quite a lot, but it, we kind of just lost passion about it because the, you know, the people that came to our videos, they, they didn't really like us still because we wanted to go to Godzilla stuff. And we could, they, they could obviously see that. Uh, and I think we've found a a nice family in, in the Godzilla community. It's been really welcoming and such a nice community. I left Channel Awesome and I needed, I had a creative void. And so I was like, you know what, it'd be fun to like talk about some tokusatsu stuff. And it just kind of like became a thing. What didn't really watch anybody else. I didn't really, I wasn't aware of anybody else at the time. And then started meeting people like Chris, you know, meeting everybody else and stuff. And it's just, you know, going into this blind, kind of a desert, not really sure what's out there, and then finding, like, it's very much a thriving, living place, you know, the Tokusatsu community. You know, not just Godzilla fans, but, you know, the Power Ranger fans, and the Sentai fans, and the Kamen Rider fans. So, um, yeah, it was just interest and needed to fill a creative void. And uh, it's been a lot fun. Uh, for me, um, I went to school for uh, graphic, web design, branding, that sort of thing. After college, um, I had a little bit of video work experience, and someone who was trying to film a documentary wanted me to film for a weekend. They liked the experience, so they just made me uh, director. And we were trying to get funding for it and more and more uh, people involved, and I ended up just doing everything. And at one point, I was operating uh, like three or four cameras at once, doing audio checks and like 11 hour shoots. And uh, the financier just up and left. And uh, I was in debt with uh, equipment. So I said, I'm just gonna focus on what I set out to do in the first place, never making videos again. But I came across, uh, the first video I ever came across regarding like, um, I guess Tokusatsu, when I was interested in it, was actually Matt's video of a Just Beyond figure I'm like, what the hell is that? Like, that thumbnail is just showing, like, this chromed out, like, cool looking thing. And it was, like, you know, a couple minutes long. And the amount that he covered, like, it was so efficient, so informative, and just cool and beautifully shot. I thought, there's more. And I just really got into it. And then I saw, like, um, like oh, then I saw the faces, which was Matt, Brian, Max, and uh, Chris, and uh, a few other guys who I haven't met yet. And I just got addicted to watch them because of their chemistry. And they were the only tokusatsu-related YouTube content that I watched because it felt like you know a show, a really high production value, thoughtful, um, uh, like thoughtful content. And then whenever they were coming to G Fest, I reached out and I said, "Guys, thank you so much for everything you've done. And if you're around, like, hey, let me buy you a beer. Let's just you know shoot the breeze. Just like to say thank you." And we did more than that. We hung out for the whole weekend. Um, we just became really good friends after that. And I flew out to see them one time. We just hung out at a Godzilla party. Uh, and for those of you who've seen, part of that party was Max opening an LOL figure. We trolled him with it, that was really funny. And uh, we got to talking about the YouTube channel. And the only thing that made me consider being a YouTuber was Matt put it out there. He believed I could do it. 
And while I had experience shooting subjects, hosting, like actually being in front of the cameras, nothing I've ever done before. And it was a really rough start at first. I had horrible camera and audio quality. I had to wait to save up for better stuff. And eventually I, I got better and better and better, especially with like sound engineering. And uh, I suppose my objective was I want to impress him because he does such good work. For him, it seems easy. For me, it's... Okay, anyway. Yes. Uh, I did want to mention, so like uh, D-Man here, you mentioned like a few YouTubers, uh, Godzilla YouTubers, and uh, that inspired him, and the same did uh, happen with me, and I did want to give a massive shout out to Bill Worcester, aka Zazubar. He was one of those individuals that I came across and uh, along with Dan Wickwire of Kaiju Movie Review, or KMR, uh, seeing those two guys in particular really, um, I took, I noticed the fact, it was through them that I noticed, oh wow, there's an actual audience for Godzilla YouTubers out there. So like those were, had a massive impact on me as well. And uh, the last note I want to bring up before is just a shout out to Captain Logan of Geekvolution and Corey Coleman of Spill.com aka uh, now known as Double Toasted, those were guys that were a huge influence on me personally in terms of like developing my own style, in terms of scripted and unscripted podcast style uh, content. Sorry about that, just need to get it out there. Hey, uh, you're cool. Uh, okay, so uh, uh, let's, uh, uh, while we all talk about some, some of the, uh, like, like some videos that we are very, very most proud of, uh, uh, back in May, I actually uh, reviewed uh, every Godzilla movie, including uh, other uh, non-Godzilla kaiju films like Gorath and Atragon. It, it, like, it was just one review a day for like for the whole month, building up to the release of Godzilla King of the Monsters. And uh, like, I, 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 I've honestly never worked uh, so hard on a project. I had to do it like months in advance just to like get it done. And, uh, and, and technically, it was it, like I also finished it like last minute because I would be uh, Reviewing King of the Monsters the day it came out, so um, yeah, uh, that's uh, that's something I'm very proud of uh, on my channel. Uh, what about you guys? Um, I mean, it's funny because our channel pretty much uh, became big because of our dinosaur content, which is what we originally did. We, Dangerville kind of started off as a platform for us to just do anything we loved, and then you kind of slowly uh, kind of turned into Godzilla after some time. So. Really, what we started what we started off doing was uh, we had a lot of fun um, doing the research, you know, learning our you know, learning as we make videos in efforts of teaching other people maybe some stuff about dinosaurs. So that was always really fun. And then we moved into Godzilla, and we uh, you know were able to learn about the really deep history of everything Godzilla. So we kind of took that original style of you know what goes into a T Rex. But now we're doing it with you know Godzilla and how a suit was made or how the roars were made and all that. So that was really a big part and kind of a thing that I enjoyed really a lot. Yeah. And as for stuff we're proud of, I mean obviously there's some dinosaur fact stuff we're proud of proud of because we like we like being able to learn new things. I mean even if you're learning new, new things through the videos and we're learning, learning new things making them. Um, but as for the ones I'm probably most proud of, it's probably like the animations. One you will see. And very soon, um, Walking with Godzilla, which uh, if anyone's seen or not seen, you will see it. Um, that took me a good seven months to make. Um, and I'm pretty proud of the outcome, and I hope you like it, but yeah. Uh, I guess, I think back in 2015, I started a series of reviews uh, covering every single like special effects driven, special effects heavy Toho film of the 80s and 90s. And I feel like it was at that point I was like, really starting to get a hold of my style of script writing for when it comes to scripted reviews. And uh, to this day, I'm still like, very proud of how those reviews came out and how I was able to like articulate, learn how to articulate my thoughts in a more uh, elaborated manner, more detailed manner. Um, anything, uh, the, other, only, uh, the other thing that I'm very proud of was my History of Gundam video that I did, which has done like perform beyond my expectations. Um, you know, a couple, me being like a huge uh, fan of the Mobile Suit Gundam franchise, my second favorite franchise after Go Godzilla. Uh, you know, I've always wanted to make a video helping uh, 
newcomers to the franchise to get into Gundam and because it's so massive with so many continuities, you know, I felt like, oh, I just want to make a rather condensed, uh, straightforward, to the point video explaining what Gundam is and uh, just like how many versions there are and uh, a lot of people have, you know, thanked me for saying, oh wow, I never really, um, Gundam felt too big for me, too daunting of a task to get into, but this video really made it feel clear and I'm just very happy that I was able, to, my video was able to have that effect on. I was one of them. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was too. I saw that actually fairly recently. Oh wow. Really? I uh, watched it actually three times over the course of a day, I believe. Oh, okay. I like to bounce stuff while I work. Uh, that was a very good video, my friend. Thank you very much, man. I appreciate I it. I learned something. <laughs> uh, I kind of make a habit of not watching my videos, like never revisiting them. So... I wonder why. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I guess some of the ones that I'm, I'm proud of in retrospect, um, I made a Haruo Nakajima tribute back in 2017 when he passed away. Um, that's one of the few videos that I will revisit, and then uh, my recent-ish interviews with uh, you know, King Ghidorah actors from King of the Monsters, such as Alan Max and Jason Lyles. Um, I'm excited for any of the upcoming projects I'm going to be doing with those guys, so those are the kinds of videos that, that I'm proud of. You were the first one to actually reach out to those guys, right, and actually do, like, interviews with them? Uh, I, I was. I was the first person to get an interview with Alan Maxson, and I believe I was one of the first for Jason Lyles, if not the first. Those are the mocap actors for King Ghidorah from yeah, Shout King out to Cast. Alan Maxson. Really uh, 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 hey, uh, Derek, uh, can, can you say that again? Uh, I, I didn't I couldn't quite hear that, and I don't think they can hear it either. He said, uh, shout out to Alan Maxson, Jason Lyles, TJ Storm, and Richard Jordan, the early guys who brought to life King Ghidorah and Godzilla in our favorite King of the Monsters movie. It's probably like five years ago, Bandai decided to make an SH Figuarius of Sadako, the dead girl from the Ring series. I'm a really big Ring movie fan, and I wanted to actually review that toy. And uh, it gave me a really weird excuse to recreate the Ring video and then make the review look like it had like this VHS overlay on it. And you know, like it might not be like technically like great or anything like that, but I had a hell of a time just like putting it together. It was a lot of fun. And it, you know, it's it's half a decade old, old at this point, but I still kind of point to that as like I had the most fun with that. And recreating the curse video was just like, yeah, it's cool. I think as far as like what I'm proud of the most is probably like the last video I did before like I just got too busy with life stuff was uh, you know like Mark Kaiju and the MonsterVerse. Uh, people wearing headphones can probably appreciate it more, but like the level like I, I pull out all the stops for like my editing ability and uh, sound engineering. There's like layers and layers of like transitional sound, like including like earthquakes and gravel as like monsters like rise out of the ground. I really went all out for that one. Um, I just said, like, you know, I'm going to take everything I've learned in this video and, and do it. And I learned a lot from doing that. While I'm a creative professional, it doesn't mean that I know everything. And he has a lot to teach, especially. So oftentimes, like, when I'm trying to think of, like, what to do next, I just, you know, like the Sarako video, I think, okay, how would he transition this? So I felt like I took everything I learned from him and did it in that video. And that, that I'm pretty proud of. Uh, okay, so uh, let's. Uh, uh, how about we all talk about the the approach we have uh, when it comes to like making videos, as well as like some of the challenges we face along the way. Copyright. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And Bandai. <laughs> uh, okay, so um, aside from being scared that we'll get sued by Toho and uh, can't do anything with uh, Godzilla anymore, um, uh, uh, my, uh, my my personal approach is is basically like talk about what. No one else is talking about really. Uh, that, that, that that was part of my inspiration when I uh, uh, like did a ton of movie reviews back in uh, May because no, no one's really talking about Gorath, Atragon, or War of the Gargantuas or Space Amoeba these days, really. Uh, and and uh, oh, it's, uh, speaking of which, I, I just reviewed uh, Yamato Takeru not, not too long ago. It's a it's a pretty underrated film. You all should go check it out. Orochi the Eight Headed Dragon. And uh, as you said, uh, Friday, one title sounds cooler than the other. 
That's, oh, sorry, that, that, uh, that's, that, that's basically uh, my uh, general approach when it comes to like making videos. Um, I'm sure you guys uh, like have something different aside from like just sharing your love for a, a not only a film franchise but like an, an entire subgenre uh, of films in general. <clears throat> what I've learned is if I just try to follow a trend, I tend to have little passion for the video I'm about to put out. But those are also necessary, you know, to keep content out there. You can't just not report on it. But the videos I like, and the challenge that I try to impose upon myself is how can I make this interesting, entertaining, and informative? By the end of the video, have you learned something that you didn't know? Have you maybe reconsidered a position that maybe you had about a film or a character or something like that? It, it, it should leave you feeling like proud of yourself for watching it, I guess is like how I feel about it, you know? So that you can say to someone, hey, did you know that such and such is this, as opposed to, you know, did you hear that this and this is gonna happen, you know? So I guess that, that's the challenge, is what can I dig through? What can I discover that's different and new to like give, you know, to give substance to the video? So I'd like to add that a really important thing to really do uh, going into making videos is to really just have fun. If you're not having fun, then what's really the point? If you're forcing yourself to make your content, then really at the end of the day, it's just your viewers are going to come across and they're going to see that. So it's really important that you're enjoying what you're doing. And something that's kind of unique for us, uh, kind of a trouble, is that he's from England and, you know, I'm from the States here. So we have to kind of bounce around time zones. We have to constantly work through communicating just with words on the screen on our computers. So that's been kind of a challenge, but I say we've handled it fairly well over a few years. Yeah, I mean, if anything, the, the time difference is beneficial because if some news comes out and it's three o'clock in the morning for me, he's still got some time before he goes to bed. I'm already half asleep or completely asleep, hopefully. Um, so he can make the video and then get it released next morning rather than I start the video and then release it at the end of the day or the next day. So if anything, you know, it's a bit of a challenge, but it kind of is beneficial to the channel. Yeah, there's pros and cons to that. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I, I also, also want to add, uh, uh, like, uh, like uh, having fun with making videos is also like really uh, important. Uh, I, I, I can't remember if it was called the 1,000 hour rule or the 10,000 hour rule, but basically what you do is do something you really love doing in your free time for like 1,000 or 10 hours, and, 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 and after you fulfill that amount of time doing whatever it is that you love, and you're still satisfied with it, then by all means, let that be your passion. And uh, earlier you were talking about like dealing with different time zones, and me as someone who loves making podcasts and interviews and reviews where I get to just sit down on Skype and just talk with my, my best friends over whatever movie, TV show, comic, what have you, it, it's always a bit of a, a challenge trying to deal with all these different time zones. Uh, back when I was still doing the uh, Sons of Sarazawa podcast, which is you know currently on hiatus. Uh, we were pretty much it was like four, five, and then eventually four individuals, all from different time zones. You know, what Dylan's in you know Tennessee, Bill's in New York, uh, David's in Las Vegas. I was in San Diego. You know, it's like all trying to find like the right time. Uh, so occasionally there's misunderstandings, and we you know people think that the podcast is going to start like an hour or two beforehand. And then things got even more challenging when I eventually moved to Japan. And so it's like my, uh, pretty much like their Saturday nights are like my Sunday mornings or afternoon. So it's like, that was sort of like the magic period of time. It's usually like my Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday mornings. Then all of a sudden became like the only days where I was available to do collaborations with uh, all of my friends. But even still, just like, like you know, several of you guys have also mentioned, just having fun. Um, while making the content makes it all worth uh, all worth it and uh, Yeah, that's definitely one of the biggest uh, advices I would give uh, Is that you know if you're making being a youtuber is that as long as you're having fun making the content That's in my opinion what really matters um, I know there are people out there that try to make a living off of YouTube and it can be get uh, trying to maintain that uh, that uh, weekly or monthly revenue has become more difficult than ever before, be it with copyright claims, demonetization, the YouTube algorithm, not spreading your videos out to as, as wide of an audience as it could be. It's all very challenging, 
but I guess for me personally, if you're the kind of person who enjoys taking your, uh, growing your channel at a very slow and steady, yet steady rate, uh, you know, I feel like you're able to enjoy yourselves while not having to force yourself to go through uh, what many YouTubers like to call YouTube burnout. I'm sure many people I've talked, to, you've heard many people on YouTube talk about, you know, uh, you know, YouTube burnout, going through, uh, talking about mental health, going through a lot of stress, uh, anxiety, even depression. It's a really serious problem because, you know, it's the YouTube system and algorithms pretty much trying to like force everybody to move at a much faster rate than ever before. And uh, for me personally, because I don't depend on YouTube, as, um, I just mainly treat it as a hobby. For me personally, it's just like having fun is like the number one priority for me. If, if I don't enjoy it, then what's the point of even making it, you know, for me personally? And those were, that's usually the sort of mantra I usually stick by when I, when it comes to making content for YouTube. And you know, it's something that I've enjoyed ever since. Um, so for like challenges that we face or that I face as a YouTuber, I'll start with the easy one. My approach to making content, I just try and make the videos that I would like to see. That's what I try and do. I, I don't try. I don't try and pander to people. I, I don't. I mean, obviously, I'm a, I'm a Godzilla fan. Got lots of Godzilla fans who watch me, and yet I openly root for Kong to win in 2020. I understand. I understand. <laughs> If you're gonna get to him, you're gonna have to go through me. <laughs> oh wait, you're right next to it. My bad. I'm in a bullet. Stop. That was a joke, right? What's a joke? No. Con for 2020? That is absolutely not a joke. No. <laughs> for 2020. He's big. Con for 2020. That right now. words, you hear? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry to the Nari King Kong for the win. <laughs> It's like, I, I don't try and pander to people, I don't try and tell people what, what they want to hear, I try and make the videos that I would want to watch, and I don't want to be pandered to, so that's that's what I try and do. In terms of challenges, I think time is really just the biggest challenge that you face when you're, when you're doing YouTube. I do it as my job, so when you're doing it like I do it, and you have to take it really seriously, time is the biggest thing you're going to face as a problem. It's like when you go into school or like when you're taking certain classes, your teachers will tell you, well, don't sign up for this class because it's going to, you know, you'll have to learn time management. That's going to be a big deal. Not a single class I have ever taken taught me time management like working YouTube did. YouTube has just like changed my world in terms of understanding how things work and, and everything I do takes so much more time than I think it's going to do and I'm trying to get better. So it's just always a battle with time. That's the biggest thing I've learned. Don't compare yourself to others. There are all sorts of different kinds of YouTubers out there. Do not compare your creative endeavors to other people. Follow your own path, forge your own path. It's something that every filmmaker, every content creator is gonna to need to learn at some point. And everything that these guys have been saying, you know, love what you do, do what you love. I mean, that's pretty much it. Okay, um, uh, okay, so uh, I, I, I didn't think it would take this long to uh, get to uh, however many uh, questions I had in mind. So uh, with that being said, we're going to go on ahead for the special presentation of Walking with Godzilla by Danger Hill. <laughs> Does Ghidorah have three heads? How does King Kong like his eggs? Dangerville, how many toes does King Ghidorah have? Uh, that's our next video. Is it? Are there at least ten? So the monitor's not coming on right now, so we're gonna try to figure that out, I guess, really quick. What's your opinion on Kaiju Kajukas? <laughs> oh, I was gonna ask that! Otherwise, we're gonna get canceled. I'm gonna find a dude who manages the projector, so give me a little time. You just keep talking, we'll ask some questions. Do you? 
Okay, so uh, while they get everything set up, do we uh, have any questions? Um, I saw you first, so go ahead. Yeah. What do you think that do you think that Chris Paul has a genuine chance of winning next year? Uh, absolutely, because he's going to. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if Kong beat him once, he can beat him again. Yeah, right. Uh, it was a tough No, it wasn't. <laughs> well, you see, the Japanese version got so little. <laughs> Demon, when are we going to get Hot Sauce Part 2, and when are we going to see you in the MonsterVerse? <laughs> uh, there, hopefully, fingers crossed, will never be a Hot Sauce 2, because I don't want to endure that again. As for the MonsterVerse, um, it's whenever my, whenever that Get Demon in, in Godzillaverse competition's notice, man, it's up to them. It's not on me. Uh, okay, the long ring, the very sick Return of Godzilla t-shirt. Um, what are your guys' potential thoughts on, or thoughts on the potential Toho reboot series then? Um, thoughts on the potential Toho reboot series, correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah, here you go. I, I can tell you right now, those movies are farther along than you think. Everyone plans at least five years ahead, and what you can do in those five years is a lot more than what we used to be able to do. Remember it used to take like three to four years to make one film? How many Marvel films do we get in five years? Quite a few. Trust me, you're gonna be see you're gonna be hearing something soon. I don't know exactly what, but they are farther along than you think. Or I guess you could say far from home. Um uh, Kid of the Yellow up front, right there. Yeah, um, you. So, there, so what do you think God's, um, what do you think God's Over vs. Kong is going to reveal at San Diego Comic Con? Like like a trailer, or, or Scotland Island? Destroy it! Like <laughs> is Warner Brothers even going to be at Comic Con this year? So that's the thing is, Warner Brothers isn't having an official presence there, so if anything, we will get unrelated still images coming out to coincide with the convention, like what they're doing with Wonder Woman, rather than actual presentation at the convention. I, I still, fingers crossed, you know, I'd like to say that I'd love to see a trailer, but we're not going to see a trailer. If we didn't get still images this weekend, we're not getting a trailer next. We will see still well, images of King Kong winning. Yeah, we'll probably get like a very nice poster of like a very slick logo, and that's it. Are we in Nico? Okay. Yep. Alright, uh, this is for pretty much everyone up there. Um, have you guys seen the movie Constipation yet? Oh, oh my god. Not again. <laughs> I must know about this. <laughs> <laughs> have you guys seen the new movie Constipation yet? No, I haven't. What, what is this? Constipation? Uh, is it PG content that you can describe? Um, can you make it? Can you make it PG? Your description. Just tell us. If they make, keep it PG. Okay. Uh, that's a joke I think in show would like. He's a pun. Uh, you there, in the red Columbia shirt. I've come to make an announcement that Titan Goji has now to me. What I come here to say is, can you recommend some Toku Kaiju anime that is not Evangelion, and is not Attack on Titan, and most importantly, is not the anime Godzilla films? Did someone just say Tokyo Ghoul? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> nice. Danger Bill is the best anime. <laughs> Thank you. I agree. Uh, 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 you guys want to think I feel like I'm just hogging it. You're hogging everything. Sorry. I'm <laughs> uh, the reason you're here. <laughs> hey man, nobody talks to Jesus that way. <laughs> uh, it's connected in the screen. Super Super 
Yes. Uh, uh, as long as no one gets hurt in the making of that movie. Oh, uh, 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 okay. I know it's the best part. Uh, okay, so, so uh, 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 the the question was, uh, should Blugasari get a reboot in North Korea? And I said yes. In North Korea. Okay, I'll watch that. Wait, as long as no one no one is kidnapped. Sure. No kidnapping. Wait, wait, so is everything ready? I think it's ready. Oh, all right. All right. Okay. in charge of the lines. Uh, uh, so, so, uh, so, sorry to cut my, uh, my guy short if you have questions, uh, but if, like, if you still have questions, feel free to stop or stalk us after the panel. Before we wrap everything up, do we have any uh, uh, anything you guys want to share before we close everything? Uh, let's see. So, well, I guess recently I was able to self-publish a giant robot versus giant monster comic called Primal Warrior Draco's Rule. Zornow himself from Mighty W's Godzilla comics. Uh, have it available on Kindle digitally on Amazon and currently working to get physical, more physical copies uh, released via Amazon as well. If you want to know more information about my indie comic, you can check out on Facebook Primal Warrior Drake Lazul or you can follow me on Facebook and YouTube under the name Kaiju Noir. Uh, 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 we have two minutes to make it quick. I love you. <laughs> I hope to see you guys all here again next year following the crushing defeat of Godzilla at the hands of Kong. No! 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 Kong oh, is 2020. Please select responsibly. And everybody, you could have uh, chosen to uh, spend your hour uh, buying more merch, but instead you chose to spend it with us. We value your time. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so uh, okay, so uh, I, I started promoting this in my in the beginning of my videos lately, but I have a T public where uh, I sell T-shirts. I'm actually accepting orders for T-shirts right now. And after G-Fest, I will be uploading a new t-shirt design, that of Orochi, based on the film Orochi the Eight-Headed Dragon. It has uh, three variants. There's the standard variant, the cosmic variant, and the demon variant. I was not aware of this. <laughs> not my problem. <laughs> Please, uh, I'm, I'm a struggling college student. <laughs> okay, so um, that about wraps up the Godzilla YouTubers panel. Thank you all very much. Please, turn off your ad blocker. Yes, open another window, for God's sake, let it play. <laughs> I mean, God's own sake, for God's sake. I mean, it was a missed opportunity. Forget it, we're done. How much time do you have? Support local indie artists. <laughs>